Well, good morning, Genesis Church. All right, so we waited a long time to have people back in this building. Let's see if we can make it a little bit more of a little excitement this morning. Good morning, Genesis Church. Woo! All right, we're so excited that you've joined us this morning, uh, both in person and online. We're excited that you are here with us this morning. We would ask you to join us as we begin worship today. There is a love that 
Jesus is nothing impossible for you. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. Thank you, God. When all I see is a cross, God, you see.
are so thankful, Lord, that you hold us in your hands. Father, that you, you tell us that you fight the battles for us, Lord God. As you hold us tight, protecting us, Lord God. Lord, let us fall at your feet this morning, Lord God, just saying, I don't have it, but you do. Yeah, meet us where we are, each and every one of us this morning, we pray. And open our eyes and ears for all that you have for us. Today we pray. Amen. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, guys. Hey, good morning. Welcome to Genesis Church. Whether you are in the room today or you are online, we are thrilled that you have decided to join us here this Sunday morning. Let me just say this. If you are somebody who's joining us in person and you're new to Genesis, let me just say a special welcome to you this morning if you've joined us over the past few weeks, because we know it is not easy to navigate registration and getting here. So we're thrilled that you've decided to be a part of Genesis this week and whichever weeks. And we love the fact that those of you who are still at home are joining us online. So just a couple of things I wanted to tell you about this Sunday morning. Just a reminder for everybody about giving. If you wanted to give to us here at Genesis, there are a number of ways that you can do that. For those who are in the room, there are boxes at the back and by the front door. For everybody, of course, there is texting and online. And just a thank you to each and every one of you because... Uh, you have been so faithful in giving throughout 2020, and we really, really do appreciate that. So a couple of things coming up this week at Genesis. One is online, and that is Tuesday night. You can join us on Facebook for Tuesday Talks, which is kind of like our midweek Bible study. It is uh, Tuesday night, 7 o'clock on Facebook. Let me just say this. You do not need a Facebook page to join us on Facebook. So if you are somebody who has avoided social media, Please tell me your secret, first of all, but you don't have to have a Facebook account. If you go to facebook.com forward slash Genesis Church Ally, you will find us right there, and you don't need to sign in, and you can watch any of our videos that are on there. So that is a way that you can watch our Tuesday talks. But we're working our way through the life of Jacob, and it's a great 30 minutes that we get to spend together. And then in person, people, Thursday nights, if you are in 6th through 12th grade, uh, for the past couple of weeks, our next-gen youth have started meeting again. And from what I understand, it has been a blast. I may have to sneak in here one of these Thursdays. So if you are in that age group or if you have somebody who you know is in that age group, you want to bring them. I know grandparents have been bringing their grandkids. Aunts and uncles have been bringing nieces and nephews. So if you have somebody that age, it is a great way for our kids to actually get together, spend some time together together masks, they're somewhat social distancing, but they're still having a blast on a Thursday night. So that would be a great thing for them to do. So I think that's all I have to tell you. Here's Roger. Okay. Thanks, Charlotte. Thank you. Good morning. Well, whether you're here in our house or we're in your house, it's great to be with you and to worship Jesus together, isn't it? I, uh, I, I love particularly that last song that the band sung, you know? when we speaking about the faithfulness of God and the fact he has never failed us yet. And uh, I just want to remind you, he never will either. Thank God. God is absolutely, totally faithful. Amen. So we are going to pray together and then we're going to come straight into our teaching for this Sunday morning. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the blessing of being together, of being able to pause our lives and refocus on you for a short time today. Thank you for everyone worshiping with us wherever they are this morning. And God, I pray as we look into your word together that you would speak to each one of our hearts. We all need you. We need you in different ways. But we pray, Lord God, that you would just direct our ears to hear your voice in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Amen. So we are in a teaching series now, which is called Songs That Inspire. And what we've been doing the last few Sundays is we've been looking at different sounds. It's amazing that uh, the Bible is full of beautiful songs that were written thousands of years ago that are still very relevant to you and I here this Sunday morning. A couple of years ago, I was driving down here one morning. It was a beautiful sunny spring morning. I was driving down Route 112, um, coming down towards the intersection with 25 Middle Country Road there in Coram. And uh, it was, the road was clear, the sky was blue, and the light was green. I mean, what more do you want in life, right? So I'm just motoring along, and I'm coming, and then all of a sudden, I see a car that's coming north in the opposite direction, and he starts to make a left turn at that intersection right in front of me. And apart from the fact it's a no left turn intersection, he couldn't have made it if it was a legal turn. He pulled right across in front of me, and all of a sudden, in a split second, my foot is on my brakes. I'm gripping the wheel to try to control the car. There was no way whatever on earth I could avoid the guy, and I smashed into his beautiful BMW, and it spun around right there in the middle of the road, and uh, I went towards, and I just hit the curb and stopped right in front of an electric pole. I got out of the car. And uh, my first thought was, where's my phone? I want to take a picture and put it on Facebook. No, I wanted to call the police. Uh, so, so, no. so, uh, so I'm trying to find, and then I, f- I find where my phone had ended up, and I call the cops. I see the guy got out of his car, and uh, I just called over to him and said, I've called the cops. I'm just going to wait. And we waited. And, and, and you know how that works out? It's, it's, kind of like, it's kind of like you've announced there's been some major sort of traumatic catastrophe. So we get fire trucks and ambulances and cops from every direction. And it's like, you know, everybody's there from all over. And uh, the ambulance guys come over, ask me a few questions. Are you doing good? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm quite okay. I'm good. And uh, one of them said to me, how old are you? And I said, I'm 67. He said, oh, you need to come into the back of the ambulance. We need to check you. I said, this is age discrimination. You know that, right? Because if I told you I was 40, you'd have let me go on my merry way. So he takes me and he checks me out and and, uh, and everything is fine. The tow truck comes and takes it. I call Charlotte. She brings me down here. I I I go sit in my office here and suddenly I start shaking. Like, I'm okay till now. And you know what? When I was sitting there, You know what was going through my head? It wasn't what had happened. It was what might have happened. That's what was going through my head. That's what was really troubling me and causing me some anxiety in that moment. I'm thinking how that could have gone. What if I'd been going a bit faster and hit that pole and this happened and that happened? What if I hadn't been able to thoroughly avoid? What if, what if, what if? And it was the what ifs. This morning with my teaching... That's exactly where I want to start off, the what ifs. I want to talk to you a bit about Psalm 124. And Psalm 124 starts like this. Here's what it says, Psalm 124 verse 1. If the Lord had not been on our side. And then actually the songwriter says, Let Israel say, and the idea is that everybody says together, if the Lord had not been on our side. And I tell you this, this Sunday morning, every single one of us listening right now, we could kind of really, I'm sure, identify with that and with times in our life or in life as a whole and say, if the Lord had not been on our side, fill in the blank, right? If the Lord had not been. This is one of the Psalms of David. And uh, it's thought to be written at a time in his life after David had become the king of Israel. And when David became the king, in the second book of Samuel, chapter 5, it says this. It says, when the Philistines, who were the sworn enemies of Israel, got word that David had been made king over all Israel, they came on the hunt for him. David heard of it and went down to the stronghold. 
So this was the time there's the new king, David's the king, and their enemies are going to try their hardest right now before he really gets established. They're going to do their best to defeat him and his armies and to pull the nation down. And the response of David to that particular time in his life and history is Psalm 124. If the Lord had not been on our side. And then there are three pictures that he gives us in the course of the psalm. He speaks about the enemy being like a huge monster. Verse 3, if the Lord had not been on our side, they would have swallowed us alive when their anger flared against us. And then he uses the picture of a raging flood. If the Lord had not been on our side, the flood would have engulfed us The torrent would have swept over us. The raging waters would have swept us away. And and then there's a picture of something like wild dogs. If the Lord hadn't been on our side. But he says, praise be to the Lord who has not let us be torn by their teeth. And then in verse 7, we have escaped. Like a bird from the fowler's snare. The snare has been broken. And we have escaped. Praise God. The trap laid for us. The thing meant to hurt us. The events that could have killed us. We have escaped. The snare has been broken. And we are escaped. I love love this psalm. It's It's a psalm of thanksgiving, first of all. I, I, uh, I, Put the opening part of this psalm, if the Lord had not been on our side. I put it up on Facebook the other week and I, I threw the invitation out there and said, would you like to finish this sentence? And there were a lot of people replied, too many actually for me to be able to go through them all. But here's a sample of the replies I got from different folks. If the Lord had not been on my side, I would be lost, unhappy, with no hope. Our marriage would have dissolved. I would not have survived. I would be dead. I would have fallen and stumbled and stayed in the darkness. I would have given up on life, convinced I was a failure. I would have fallen into an abyss and given up a long time ago. I would not be sober and peaceful today. I would not be alive. I would not have all that I have today. I would not have the family I have today. And the replies went on and they continued. And and, and you know, there are stories right around the whole of this room and with everyone who's joining us online today. We've all got stories that testify to this fact. If the Lord had not been on our side, then things would have been very different. But our response this morning is this, praise be to the Lord. Praise be to the Lord who has not let us be torn by their teeth. Praise be to the Lord. Psalm 124 is a psalm of thanksgiving that is reminding us of the goodness of God and encouraging us to give thanks and to praise the Lord. And the truth is we often need to be reminded, hey, you know what? We've got a whole heck of a lot of stuff we really need to be thankful for and we should be praising God for. You know, you, you know, it's, it's so easy. And there are always challenges in life. There are always battles in life. There are always things we're working our way through. But it's so easy to get focused on those and forget the fact that God's people are blessed people because God indeed is on our side. Amen. So easy to forget that. I mean, you know, there are some people we learn not to ask them how they are, right? Right? I mean, you can agree. It's okay. This is just us. Right? I mean, there are. There are. It's, it's like because you know, you know what's going to happen. It's not uplifting because you never heard them say a positive word yet in their lives. Now, I'm not making light of battles that folks face, but I'm telling you this, that in the darkest of times, I've still got stuff to thank God for and to be grateful for. And I can still recognize the fact 
that God is with me. Psalm 100 and verse 4 says this. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. I remember a few years ago, somebody said to me, I, I'm, I'm not going to be coming to the church anymore. Um, and I said, oh, I'm disappointed. Anything particular? He, and, and this person said, well, you know what? The music doesn't do a thing for me. And I said, well, it's not meant to. It's not meant to. Our band are not entertainers. They're worshipers. They're worshipers. They're here to lead us in worship and to help us to worship God together. You know, it isn't a case that we come in down here and it's the band's job to pump us up so that then we're ready to listen to the preaching. It's not that at all. The Bible says you enter his gates with thanksgiving. You come into his courts with praise. You arrive thankful to him and blessing his holy name. That's how we should be starting out, folks. In Colossians 3 and verse 15, it says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Be thankful. Some of you carrying loads this morning may just need to refocus and get your eyes off the burden you're bearing and really focus in on the goodness of God and the faithfulness of God and the blessing of God to you. In the next verse, verse 16, the writer says this, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing with gratitude in your hearts. Singing with gratitude in your hearts. I, I, I don't know, I, I, I find it a little frustrating singing through a mask. And I've got to tell the truth, but it is what it is. And those of you that wear glasses like I do, you know the double frustration. And, and, and thank you for all your tips about how to stop your glasses steaming up, but none of them have worked yet. Uh, so, but, right, but, but it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of a little different, but it is what it is, right? It is what it is. And, and you know what? Um, we're doing church differently than we've ever done church before. But you know, I'm going to tell you from my personal perspective, uh, what we're, the way we're doing church right now beats the heck out of the first six months of this incarceration when there was nobody in this place. So it was a heck of a different story when this place was empty and uh, doing service when it was live streamed to everybody. So it is what it is. So if I sing through a mask, I sing through a mask, but I'm still going to sing. I'm still going to sing because that's a part of my worship. That's a part of the expression. You know, it, it isn't kind of, you know, it isn't the, the band is not the warm-up act. From the time we start our service, we have the opportunity to praise God and to give thanks to the Lord. And we should be seizing that with the gratitude that flows from hearts that God has so blessed. It's a psalm of thanksgiving. An attitude of gratitude will impact every area of your life. Whatever you've got going on. And it will help us to deal with the negatives that there are around about us. In Psalm 34, the writer says, Magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me. I'm going to read that bit again. And if you want, wherever you're, you're here in the house or there in your house, I, I want to just uh, give you the opportunity. You could say amen after that if you want. We're having to retrain some of you because you've had six months off. But, but, but here we go. Here we go, right? I sought the Lord and he heard me. Amen. All right, we'll work on that. But, 
But isn't that, isn't that true? Isn't that our testimony? He heard me and he delivered me from my fears. If the Lord had not been on our side, but thank God the Lord is on our side. And so today we come to worship God together and we come with thankful hearts, expressing our thanksgiving to God. I love the picture in the book of Acts where where Peter and John are going to the temple to pray. And as they go to the temple to pray, there's a man sitting there begging. And uh, he looks up to them and hoping to get some, some money out of them. And Peter says, hey, we, we haven't got any money. Uh, I've only got a debit card. No, he didn't. He said, he said silver. That's what my daughter always says. Uh, he, said, he said, look, we, we don't have any silver or gold. But he said, I'll give you what we've got. In the name of Jesus, stand up and walk. And, and, and the man's reaction is, is there for us in verse 8 of Acts 3. It says, he jumped to his feet and walked. The man went into the temple with them, walking back and forth, dancing and praising God. Everybody there saw him walking around and praising God. And they recognized him as the one who sat begging at the temple's gate, beautiful, and rubbed their eyes astonished, scarcely believing what they were seeing. He was so excited about what God had done for them that he was unbelievably, incredibly expressive in his worship and thanksgiving as he went into the temple. And I want to encourage you today, don't ever lose that. Switch on your iPad on a Sunday morning. Say, okay, may as well put the service on. I'll just go get some coffee while they're getting warmed up and whatever. Now, no, don't take it lightly. Or walk into these doors like, okay, it's Sunday. Here we go. He came into God's house, jumping, dancing, praising God. So excited for what God had done because God had changed his life. I want to tell you this. Wherever you might be at right now, if you're a follower of Jesus, never lose the wonder of this. God has changed your life. Amen. And God has changed your eternity as well. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Psalm 124 is a, is a song of thanksgiving. The, the second thing I want to say about Psalm 124 is that it is a, a song of testimony. It's just speaking out what God has done. A dying, distressed world does not need to be convinced of your theology. People do need to hear your testimony. Jesus delivered a man who was tormented by demonic forces. And as Jesus was about to leave in Mark 5, it says this, as Jesus was getting into the boat, the demon-delivered man begged to go along, but he wouldn't let him. Jesus wouldn't. Jesus said, go home to your own people. Look at what he said. Tell them your story, what the master did, how he had mercy on you. Tell them your story, what the master did. I love that. You see, a person who's got a story is never at the mercy of an individual who only has an argument. Some people love to discuss. Well, I believe this. Well, I believe that. Let me tell you this that Jesus did for me. Because they like to discuss theory. But you know what? People who don't yet know the Lord, they need to know your story too. John 4, Jesus meets a woman and talks with her and she comes to realize that he is the Savior, the Messiah. And it says she went back into the town. Back in the village, she told the people, come see a man who told me all about the things I did, who knows me inside out. Do you think this could be the Messiah? And they went out to see for themselves. She went and told them the story. Come and see this guy, the guy who knows me thoroughly. He seemed to know everything I've done. And I think this might be the Messiah. Come and see him. 
Psalm 124 is a song of testimony. If the Lord hadn't been on our side, we'd have gone under. If the Lord hadn't been on our side, we'd have been eaten up. If the Lord hadn't been on our side, then we'd have been torn to pieces. But thanks be to God, he delivered us from the trap. And, 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 you know, the most powerful thing we have is, is, is the story, the testimonies of what the Lord has done for us and who the Lord has become to us. And I want to encourage you, you don't need to be a great preacher. All you need to be able to do is share some of your story with people when it's appropriate and see what God will then do. A testimony is a powerful thing. Jesus told his disciples in Acts 1 before he went back to heaven, he said, when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you'll be able to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, all over Judea and Samaria, even to the ends of the world. So he said, he didn't say there, you're going to be preachers all over the place. He said, you will be my witnesses. You'll talk about what I've done. You'll talk about what I've said. People need to know that Jesus cares about their hurts and that Jesus can bring healing. People need to know that there is hope for them in their darkest moments. Don't be afraid, ashamed to speak out. Jesus didn't say to his disciples there, you're going to be preachers. He didn't say you're going to be policemen either. No disrespect to the cops among us. But he didn't say that. And there are too many people who think their role in life is to be Christian policemen putting everybody straight. You know, they do. It feels their God-anointed role. So they're going to push a Bible verse at anybody and everybody who they have the opportunity to do. And they're going to correct everybody. I'm going to tell you something. People who don't know Jesus live like people who don't know Jesus. Why does that surprise you? And you can't correct them and think it'll all work out. You need to introduce them to Jesus. Then it'll all work out. Right? You can't clean fish before you catch them. You catch them first and then you clean them. And actually what happens basically in the Christian life is this. Is, 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 is that God allows us to help to catch them, but God does the cleaning. God called us to be witnesses. There was, there was one of the replies I got to my inquiry about how would you finish this sentence if the Lord hadn't been by my side, if the Lord hadn't been with me. And one of the replies went like this, if the Lord had not been by my side, I don't think I would be here. I used to deal drugs and use. I used to sleep around. I used to gossip and judge people. I did things my way, not caring about it if I hurt people. I was a mess. But when I found God, (laughs) and there's a lot more that came after that, but when I found God, that's a powerful story, isn't it? Right? And you wouldn't believe it. You know, I mean, you know, you're sitting around because we all look relatively respectable on a Sunday morning, right? And it's like, but you don't know the stories. We don't know where God brought so many others that are here with us and are others who are part of our church all over. We don't know the stories. We don't know where God's brought them from. But the truth is, if we are here today as followers of Jesus, if we are here today in the family of God, the reality is that every single one of us does have a story. And if God hadn't been in it, if God hadn't brought us here, then we would not have come this far if the Lord hadn't been on our side. So, so you know what? As believers, it's okay to ditch the pretense of, prote- of perfection because that doesn't really help anyone. What I do want to encourage you to do is talk about Jesus naturally, positively. Hey, talk about church. I, I love the fact that we're meeting new folks despite the, the kind of, you know, the hurdle of reserving seats. I love that. I love the fact we're hearing of different people who are watching us on a regular basis. Talk about church. In, in fact, what I say to folks, you know, if you talk, if you talk to folks about church and get them to watch or even get them to come, if you'll do that bit, we'll do our bit, and God will do the bit that really matters. Amen. And He does that. 
you know, what if, what if tomorrow, some of you going back in a work situation, so what did you do yesterday? Oh, I went to church. What, what if you had a, just a little, a little, a, just the slightest margin of excitement about that? Right? Like, I went to church. Not, oh, I went to church. It was really good. No, no, not that. That, because that, that, that doesn't lend itself to any ongoing conversation. What if it was, I went to church. It was really helpful. I mean, you don't have to lie. I mean, if it was, all right? You know, but, 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 but I went to church and it was helpful. That actually sets up the opportunity for a follow-up question on their part, doesn't it? We don't have to be preachers. If it had not been for the Lord when I was going through a tough time, if it had not been for the Lord when I lost my job, if it had not been for the Lord when my mom died, if it had not been for the Lord when I was trapped in addiction, if it had not been for the Lord when I felt totally alone, if it had not been for the Lord when my child was so sick, when I didn't know how I could pay my bills, when I thought that I was going to die, if it had not been for the Lord, but praise be to the Lord who has not let us be torn by their teeth. This is a song of testimony. And I tell you that it makes it powerful. And your testimony and my testimony are the most powerful things that we have got. And as we share our testimony, we give hope to other people that the God who has helped us and delivered us is the God who can help them and can deliver them. It's a song of testimony. And then thirdly, Psalm 124 is a song of triumph. A song of triumph. We have escaped like a bird from the fowler's snare. The snare has been broken and we have escaped. I just love the picture in this verse where, where it's, it's kind of like a, a trap set to capture a bird. But I want you to notice what it says in, the, in this verse. It says, we've escaped. The snare has been broken. So in other words, you know, it's not that we broke loose. It's that somebody did it for us. And I want you to notice what it says. It didn't say the, the snare, the trap was opened and we got free. It says the snare has been broken and we have escaped. And what God has done for every child of God through Christ is he has broken the grip of sin and set us absolutely free. The snare is broken and we are escaped. The snare is broken and we have escaped. That is what God has done for us. He has broken the sin that gripped us. Jesus said in John 8 and verse 36, he said, if the Son sets you free, you are free through and through. Or as most of us know that verse, if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. Amen. Amen through and through. What God offers to us through Jesus Christ is freedom. And if you this Sunday morning are feel as if your life is trapped, feel as if you can't get out of where you are at, if you feel as if there is no hope for you, no future for you, no life for you, I want to tell you this. If you will open your heart to Jesus Christ today, Christ will come into your life. And when Jesus sets you free, the trap is broken and you are free indeed. Folks, that's the gospel. The gospel is that Christ died so that we need not die. The, the, the gospel is that Jesus went to the cross so that you and I could go free. And that is how God intends for you and I to live. And the testimony of Psalm 124 is this. The snare has been broken. You know what that means? And this is going to sound brutal. It means sin only rules in your life to the degree you allow it to. Because the snare has been broken. Because in Christ, 
there is freedom. Now, I know there are battles that every one of us faces. But the fact is this. In Christ, we can overcome. In fact, in Galatians 5, it says this. Christ has set us free to live a free life. So take your stand. Never again let anyone put a harness of slavery on you. Christ has set us free. Christ has set us free. We need to live in freedom. And we need to order our lives so that we enjoy that freedom. Verse 8 of Psalm 124, Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Whatever may plague you and pull you down today, I want to tell you there is freedom in Jesus. Because there are stories. There are stories just in this room here with us this morning. There are story after story after story after story that says this, you know, the Lord set me free. He set me free. And God can set you free. Because God wants you to live in freedom. Romans 8, Paul talks about all the things that that kind of are, are poised against us. And in verse 37, he says, In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. If the Lord had not been on our side, If the Lord had not been on our side. And Psalm 124 says, now let Israel say, let everybody say, if the Lord hadn't been on our side. Okay, you ready? We'll do it that way. Okay. I'll start it. Then you join in. It goes like this. If the Lord had not, no, no, this is my bit. Just wait, right? Just wait. I'll give you your cue. If the Lord had not been on our side, now let Genesis family say, Amen. Yeah. Yeah, if God hadn't been on her side. But praise be to God who hasn't left us to be torn by their teeth. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and of earth. Let this Sunday be a day of thanksgiving. Let this Sunday be a day when you share your testimony. And let this be the day when you live in the triumph that is ours through the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Father, we lift our hearts to you in gratitude this morning because the fact is we really don't know how that sentence would have ended if the Lord hadn't been on our side. We don't know. And thank you, Lord, we never will know because you are on our side. Father, I pray for those that are struggling this morning with things that are gripping on to their lives. And I pray you'd help them to really reach out to you and to listen to your voice and to follow your direction so that they can live in the freedom you intended for them. Father, we lift our hearts to you today in gratitude, in thanksgiving. We don't have to think about what might have happened if you weren't with us because you've told us you are with us and will never leave us and never forsake us. And Father, we give you our thanks for that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're going we're gonna to sing our closing song of praise just now. And as we do that, just to remind you, if you would just take a seat. Um, after the song and we like everybody to go out gradually so that we maintain what distancing we are able to uh, please don't um, gravitate to any of the open areas inside the building I know it's brisk but it's sunny so feel free to fellowship outside in the air okay
God bless you. Let's stand and let's praise God together.
God bless you. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.